I wonder if the reason why people want to touch it is because they, they're in some way attracted to it or if they're repulsed by it. Like it's almost that, you know, when you taste something bad and you tell someone else to taste it too, um, I think maybe there's some of that there and that like uh, you know that this thing will feel weird or you know that this squishiness is kind of off-putting but you just want to experience it to know that that's what that is. Um, I'm Hannah Levy and I make sculptures um, and we are here in the South Bronx in my studio. When I was um, uh, really young, I wanted to be an industrial designer. So when I was growing up, I would collect books about chairs and stuff or about industrial design in general. And then as I got older, I became more and more interested in like literature and critical theory in particular. And then at a certain point, I realized that art kind of allows you to combine both of those interests. So I um, make objects, I guess, usually in metal and silicone, but also in a variety of kind of like sleek or synthetic materials. And I, I look a lot at the design strategies of like our built environment and different, different spaces. And I try to combine the forms that are already found in a lot of different spaces in ways that are um, kind of unusual or surprising. So something is recognizable, but not quite placeable. Um, and so in, in combining those things, I, kind, I try to create something that I think of as like a design purgatory. And that's like a, a, a combination of these forms. These are the molds, and these are the objects that come out of them. So the way that I, I make most of these molds is I'll, I'll cast an object in silicone, um, make a silicone mold around it. I, what I like about silicone is that it's such a recognizable texture to us because it has um, a very similar texture to like the way that our bodies work. Um, so I think when a material like silicone is combined with something like polished steel or plexiglass, um, you know what that combination feels like. So there's something like you have a tactile relationship to that. I like these materials that are kind of super synthetic, um, that uh, don't, don't exist naturally at all. The colors that I use in my work, um, I take a lot from, um, the interior spaces of like homes and offices. I think more in America, there are often these like tones of beige, and I'm interested in how these these colors, which are thought of as neutrals or beige tones, um, are also kind of skin toned, um, often specifically like Caucasian skin toned, um, and kind of I think there's like an underlying kind of like perversity to that or it's like problematic there's also some kind of like kinkiness to it the idea of sitting on a chair that's the same color as you I like um, to make sculptures that are uh, shapes that you can relate to easily and a way to do that is by taking the shape of furniture or it's a good way to kind of scale a piece and also to um, kind of most of my work like is not actually meant to be sat on or lay on but it's a way of kind of proposing this thing as an object that one might sit on or lie on and then the, the kind of impossibility of that, if there's this like very thin material stretched over it, or if there's already these um, organic forms like shoved into the, the metal, you know that um, 
there's no there's no actual space for a human in that work, but the shape of it implies like a space for someone to lie or sit on it. Um, so these very familiar things become um, a little bit surreal or off-putting in a, a context where they don't normally belong. For this croissant um, that came out of this mold, it's another two-sided one, um, I, I cast it in a couple different layers and then I, I lay kind of silicone veins into it and I, I pin the veins in with pins and then I'll cast a layer and then take the pins out and then do it again. So it's a couple step process but that way the veins really like look like they're inside the silicone. It's um, displayed in this um, plexiglass um, stand um, so that that piece, I, I think it's, it's a bit surreal that this thing that is food is also kind of appears as flesh, so it's something that will be part of your body, but then also is body-like in and of itself. Um, and then the, the stand that that piece is on is actually something I really thought a lot about and um, tried to make and look for a shape that would make sense for it. It's a found object, it's for a remote control holder, so it, it holds a TV remote, um, but there's, there's really no need for it to be kind of as curvy and sensual as it is, and I like that kind of curvy and sensual mode of display paired with this like fleshy, phallic um, food object. Well, the asparagus in particular is something I've worked with a lot. Um, I like the asparagus for a lot of reasons. One is that when it's in silicone, it is so different from the like kind of fresh crunchiness of the original asparagus, but also that um, in its original size, it's very appendage-like in that it, it could be a finger or it, it just feels like it it could fit on a body in some way and scale and it, even in texture. And so there's, there's this kind of um, invasive quality of the asparagus and that it, it's almost alien and that it does some, it has some strange after effect on the body. So I, I really like that context of that like organic form in particular. This asparagus shape comes from an asparagus this size so it really um, took a lot of different molds to get from um, this negative form of the asparagus to uh, this much bigger one. So in the iPad video, there are two hands, my hands which are kind of playing with this cast iPhone headphone case. Um, and it's cast in silicone, so it's very soft and malleable. The way that video is filmed, the scale is one to one. And the way that the, the kind of massaging hands on that form look is, is a bit sexual. It becomes kind of masturbatory, even though it's this very kind of innocent form at the end of the day. It is just these like um, headphone, I iPhone headphones and hands playing with them. There's kind of a, a planned obsolescence in the form of all of these technological things. So that iPhone headphone case that was once um, a very relevant shape is now already there's a, a new kind of iPhone headphone that doesn't have a cord and is a slightly different shape. So the, the kind of planned obsolescence of all of these materials and how quickly that piece will age, the way that it ages over time, it is really like 
a, a relic of a certain year and the way that we interact with something like an I, iPad or an iPhone is, is an often kind of masturbatory. I'm not projecting so much on the future as just looking at where we are now. And I think there is a lot of kind of like hidden sexuality in our design forms just because humans at the end of the day are pretty basic in our urges. These objects will have these curves to them or they, they'll be kind of exaggeratedly curvy. They'll have these like glossy finishes and none of that is usually necessary. It's not a functional thing. It's a formal thing to attract our eyes which are designed to like certain kinds of curves. And so I think connecting those two things like the, these like sexual, the sexual nature of design which designers know about and talk about. It's a known strategy, but then pushing that even further um, into these more obvious areas of sexuality is something I'm interested in and excited about. So it's not so much looking at the future as much as it is like the present and the design strategies used presently.